The world of horror may never sleep, but unfortunately guys, I do. So sorry for the delay on this video. I know it's been a little while since we have covered any gems from the spooky section of the gaming world. A good couple of months to be honest, but today we return with our third volume of Hidden Horrors. A series dedicated to highlighting my favourite games that go unnoticed, unappreciated, are still being developed, might have a demo, or I just think, you know, deserve far more attention. It could have come out years ago, it could be coming out years in the future. I just like to showcase it in this series and really, you know, give them credit where credit's due. I am John, or Void Retro, whatever you want to me to go by and yeah I do recommend watching the first two volumes of the on the channel of this series before diving into this one so you get a bit of a vibe of what I'm going for here and there has been so many incredible games to enjoy in the past as well so you'd be missing out but if you're here thanks for supporting the series it's a real passion project finding indie games and more to bring the fellow fans of the genre to one series and one place to enjoy them. Let me know if there's any you would like me to see feature in a future for a potential volume 4. But let's focus on today's video and dive right into more eerie and wonderful games available or coming soon. First up, I want to talk about an incredible little demo I found called Unknown Tapes. A game by Travertine Games, I think it's pronounced. And it promises to bring the Dino Crisis meets Outlast horror experience. I found footage analogue horror featuring dinosaurs. I am sold already and so should you. I have seen countless fan projects on YouTube of analogue horror, Jurassic Park like experiences and they are always so eerie. I always thought why do we not have a game like this? Well, it's coming and it feels right out of Jurassic Park itself, and is equally unsettling and unique. The sound design is some of the best I have seen in an indie project alone, for their standards. It's truly immersive, and I recommend wearing headphones the entire time. I was on the edge of my seat for about 20-30 to 30 minutes I played. It really sets the scene for a full game in its scope. There weren't many details on the protagonist or the overall story, but environmental storytelling was pretty strong here with notes for context and dinosaurs breaking through walls and just spooky sounds in the distance. There's lots of spooks, lots of jump scares, and it's not what I expected from a low budget title. And for, from what I can see as well, there's no fighting back, it's hide or die, no guns or melee. You are dino food if you're spotted, but this could change in the full game. It's just you versus prehistoric elements, and it's pretty refreshing given recent horror games have become more action again. Unknown Tapes has a vibe all on its own, and with a free demo it's hard to say no or turn this down. Just trust me, play it in the dark, with a good set of headphones, on your own, you'll really experience a simple and to the point treat for your gaming dark diet. Next up, a game I actually received a key for, and I wanted to cover it anyway, so this is kind of, you know, all come into one place at the right time. Conscript. The word is defined by a compulsory enlisting, and that is what I demand of you with this new survival horror game. It's set in World War One with a beautiful yet classic art style. Conscript has you playing as a French soldier on the front lines at the Battle of Verdun, you're battling Germans, and it is really the horrors of war themselves. You're managing inventory, your health, puzzles, locks, and fighting with melee and guns across the trenches, reliving those dark days of the war. It was created by a Jordan Mochi, who clearly wanted a new take on the survival horror genre in the grimness of war. It's something I didn't expect to like, let alone love. And it's out in just a few days, with a demo available now if you want to give it a go. Luckily, I was offered a code, as I mentioned, for the full game, so I had to share it with you on our third volume. It really is a strong contender. It has a visually dynamic yet nostalgic aesthetic to it, with almost point-and-click reminiscent cutscenes. The sound design is also amazing, with like the bullets flying overhead and the trenchy, muddy feet. It's just, it's really breathtaking. Sadly, there's no full voice acting from what I can see, 
but I imagine there was a budget constraint and potentially a design choice here. These games always don't need it. It feels like Amnesia the Bunker meets Resident Evil. There's even an item box and a lamp system to save. One of the best, most unique takes on survival horror I've seen lately, and it gets better as you play with, with plenty of surprises around those trench corners. The horrendous Battle of Verdun has been manipulated with the RE survival horror elements to its full galore, and in such an oppressive atmosphere, it's a must play. Now, I don't tend to cover a lot of multiplayer horror experiences on the channel, but the few I do, I really endorse as a great experience. Scare Ritual is one I've covered in the past that I really enjoyed, although that was more of a round-based shooter horror, and obviously we have games like Dead by Daylight, and so on. But today, we're going to feature Devour, and it, as it's exactly one of those. Created by Straight Back Games, with the sole aim of players stopping crazed and demonic cultists. Now this game's already been out for a while, but it has had continuous updates, fixes, and new content coming. But it's not quite like that Dead by Daylight setup of asymmetrical 4v1. It's a 4 versus AI situation. Each map will have a specific mechanic to focus on and complete, so you can beat the evil entity stalking you on that level. From the burning of goats, to collecting rats and eggs, you'll face an evil witch-like woman, to a zombie mental patient, to even a monstrous spider and a haunting cowboy. It's jump scares and atmosphere are some of the best available, and I remember playing this on stream quite a while ago, and really, really getting like scared out of my wits with some of the jump scares, so. It's giving you a chance to really experience something with friends here, and you can fully customise your player as well, the difficulty, the perks, so you can really tailor it to you and your friends. It adds a solid amount of replay value for a quite cheaply budgeted indie tile here. While the graphics may not be out of this world, the spooky nature and horror vibes of its character and level design are fantastic. It's in the same league as Phasmophobia and Demonologist in that sense. Next, I want to focus on a game we sadly cannot play first hand yet, not even in demo form, but because of how incredible and unique it looks to me, I had to feature it, just to get some more eyes on it, maybe help with some wish lists. It really has taken kind of my keen interest as it seriously deserves every horror and retro fan's attention. Nightmare Operator by DD Distortion. That's, in their words, maybe a mix-up of genres. It's an action horror shooter about hunting seem seemingly demonic forces, or yokai I think it's pronounced, in the haunted ruins of Tokyo. Combat fusing tension and fun, shooter gameplay and classic survival horror elements, with skill based mechanics and execution of fighting and spectacular fighter mechanics too. A lot of you may enjoy these kind of aspects these days, so it's definitely honing in on a specific niche. It seems heavily inspired by the likes of Dead Space, Dino Crisis, Resident Evil and even Guilty Gears to a point, and its initial trailers have me quite excited. I'm very looking forward to getting my hands on this, hopefully we might have a little demo in the next couple of months. But you may have come to realise I am a sucker for PS1 polygonal style visuals, but with modern control schemes. And Nightmare Operator is no different. This has some major potential like Crow Country did before, with that kind of old school vibe and mechanics and mix up of genres, and that did extremely well with the horror community. So make sure you wishlist this, even featuring a unique mechanic known as the clutch system that did, you know, take my interest as well, allowing players to change out weapon modules on the fly, almost like different combat styles in Ghost of Tsushima, and it just makes the action feel fun and fresh by the look of it. It's a really cool concept and project, and it's still in the oven, but I can tell you when that thing is fully baked, I am gorging it down. Penultimately, we have a very strange and wonderful demo available over on Steam called Tenembrous Somnia, I think it's pronounced. I'm terrible with some of these pronunciations, I've got to admit. A name, even after Googling, I'm quite confused over, but it did allude to its full true meaning, 
but simply it means the life out of darkness, which suits it. However, what makes this game stand out apart is not its name. It's how it handles its execution and visual design. It is a mix of 8-bit art style and live action cutscenes. It's very like the classic gaming of the late 80s and early 90s, Alone in the Dark comes to mind and Sweet Home. The colour palette, the scrolling text of an 8-bit soundtrack mix so well with that investigatory horror aspect, somewhat also reminiscent of Clock Tower as well. The gameplay itself is pretty simplistic, entering rooms, gathering items, clicking on objects, getting some text, you know, solving the puzzles. There's little to no combat available within this short demo, just a teeny little bit at the end and you'll see what I mean. But it did take some brain power to work out its puzzles, which I really appreciate. So many games these days hold your hand and after playing games like Elden Ring, it's really refreshing to see the horror side of things catching up on this challenging aspects of gaming. Nevertheless, the aspects that are really standing out here is how it melds that gameplay with the high budget indie horror live action sequences. It's really something special that few have done successfully before, and this little indie gem is definitely one for your wish list when it comes out, hopefully in a few months to a year. Lastly, I want to showcase another quite creative idea in Among Ashes. A horror game that involves playing a horror game. It's like Inception, but darker, scarier, more nostalgic and involving a keyboard. I very much saved my personal favourite for the final curtain call of this video with Among Ashes. And it managed to do the impossible, keep my ADHD brain's attention and got me invested in the game's very meta and wheels within wheels narrative. This is something rare for me these days for context, so you'll immediately be sucked into this Doom Quake like ripoff on first loading up the game and be pretty confused that what is this game, this doesn't look what it's advertised. But don't worry, once you die once in that little mini game, it all becomes clear. You're playing a game within a game, messaging a friend on a fake like MSN in the 90s, it seems as you download another game that they are playing, drawing you into a survival horror experience at a mansion. And I don't know if there's more games to come with this. While the general narrative is spooky and plays out between the games, each of those games seem to have an interconnected part and role to play within their own stories. It's just a demo for now, but a beefy one at that, it was quite long. And I was hooked at the concept, but playing it really drove home how incredible this could be in a full release later in the year. The graphics obviously won't win any awards, but they aren't trying to. But it looks really cool, and I really, really think it truly deserves a lot of attention for the developer's creativity, and it's quite memorable. So, yeah. And another moment I knew there was something special is the puzzles in Dr. Stoker's room. And I love those horror name references in the demo too, it was a really great touch. But that puzzle, it was so well done with a friend reference in the game being broken due to a bug and then telling you how to solve it. It was a truly meta method of handling that first puzzle. So bravo, and I cannot wait to play it in full soon. Make sure you check out Among Ashes. So that's it for today's video and our third volume of Hidden Horror Must Plays. So I hope you've enjoyed it and you've at least spotted one game you want to give it a try. That's what this series is all about, just branching out, seeing some good indie and maybe double A standard horror games with retro aspects or full on scares or some sort of creative flair to it that just makes it stick out a bit more from the rest. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe if you enjoy what you see today and let me know below which one of these is really taking your fancy the most and if there's any other games you want to see me cover in the future that I've not mentioned on any of these volumes yet because I'm happy to check out more, we just need enough to cover a video. <laughs> so that's everything for today guys, thank you for watching, I'll see you soon, bye bye.
Ha, 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 ha.